Hey Vibers, it's Sean. Welcome to Sean Vibes. You guys, I am in such a great mood because I am nervous as hell about this reading. <laughs> I don't know why that would make me in a great mood. It just is. I am probably because I'm trying something new, so I'm excited about the experimentation. Let's talk about it. So first of all, today's reading is a collaboration with Ignited Intuition. My good friend over there, Nisha, is going to be doing a reading for you as well. So on my side, I am going to be covering the energies that you need to let go of and the possible outcomes. And Inesha is going to talk to you today about what energies you should bring in and the possible outcomes. Now, what part of all of this is making me so excited besides the fact that I get to play with a friend via online? Um, this is how we're going to do yours uh, here on my side. OK, so we're going to start off with a collective reading. Uh, about the energies that you need to let go of. And so again, if you found this reading, pay attention to what comes up here. Uh, even if it's not something that you're aware of, of something that you might be holding on to or that may be holding you back, there is a message here for you around energies that you need to let go of. And then at the end of that collective part of the reading, we're gonna do a pick a card section where you get to select intuitively which goddess you feel will best help you move through or move these energies out of your life move on beyond what this energy has been in your life uh so without further ado let's get started hi guys editing version of me here because i forgot to mention when i first recorded the intro that i want to invite you to a conversation series i'm hosting on my podcast not so average with sean wilson there are three guests coming over the next three weeks that I know you're going to enjoy. On July 13th, Jenny Florence of Moon Magic Weekly Tarot will be visiting with us and talking about life path and destiny. On July 20th, Alyssa LaRose of Celtic Fairy Tarot will be my guest talking about the same topic. And on July 27th, Odessa Mall, Mystic Intuitive Healer, will be sharing her thoughts and feelings around life path and destiny here on this channel. Those are all Thursdays. The release time for each of those conversation episodes is 11, 11 a.m. So if you're not already subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and do that now so that you get notified by YouTube. Oh yeah, I need to say that this is only on YouTube for the first three weeks. So be sure to subscribe to my channel there so that you can be notified when the videos are ready, when the videos are ready, when the conversations are ready. Nope, that ain't it either. Anyway, so you can be notified <laughs> when they premiere and enjoy them along with me. I hope to see you there. Now back to your main video. I have several decks here on my table because I'm feeling a lot of things. So I'm just gonna let it play out as we go along uh, to see which ones we actually use. We will probably not be using all of these, okay? The, um, oh, I forgot to say the part that makes me excited, sorry. <laughs> I told you I was nervous. Okay, so the part that makes me excited is the fact that we are using uh, a deck that I really do like a lot. It's the Modern Goddess Oracle by Ethany. It is a huge deck full of a ton of goddesses. Like, look how thick that deck is, right? And uh, I don't know them all, all right? So when we do your pick a card section, we may uh, get some goddesses that show up that I'm not familiar with. And so that makes me a little bit nervous. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn about those goddesses with you. If we happen to pick ones that I don't already know, we'll just break out the guidebook and see what Ethany, sorry, see what Ethany teaches us about them. I hope I'm saying her name right. Maybe she says Ethany. I don't know. I, I assume it's Ethany, but maybe I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. Anyway, I'm Sean. I got that right. Okay, guys. So before we go any further. We are starting with the Wiser Tarot today. It is a Rider Waite Smith like deck. Uh, it's the same imagery, but with different coloring, and it just felt like the right vibe for us today. So I am shuffling this one for you. It is already, like I said, all of these decks are pre-shuffled, but you'll oftentimes see me side shuffle anyway, because it does help me, as you can probably tell, calm my energies. So I'm gonna take a second to connect with my higher self and my guides. And I'd like to invite you to do the same so that we can get the most accurate messages for you today. Can we please give some guidance to the people who found this group, sorry, found this uh, reading today on what energy or energies they need to let go of right now and the best possible outcomes for them. 
All right. Oh, wow. Okay, so we got three that popped. We have, oof, oof. <sighs> Ten of Swords. We got the Lovers. Mm. We got the Page of Swords. And let's get one more for you. I mean, I feel like this is good news. Honestly speaking, anything that you're being guided to let go of, it's always for our best benefit, right? So it was going to be good news either way. But oh, okay. Wow. We got, oh, wow. All right. This is not what I was anticipating, but we are going to take them all. Uh, I feel that whenever a lot of cards come out in a reading, it's because there is an abundance of energy around uh, that topic or situation that we're reading on and that the guides that are involved have a lot to say about it. And so I don't personally like to you know, like shut that down or shut it out. I like to incorporate all of the cards that we get. So we got the Hierophant. Okay. We got the Fool. We got the Three of Cups. And we got the King of Cups. All right, so a couple of things that I want to point out right away are, uh, I'm trying to figure out where I can put my deck. There we go. Okay. Uh, first of all, we do have three major arcana cards. Right off the bat, I noticed that. Okay. We have the Lover's card, we have the Hierophant card, and we have the Fool card. We also have two court cards, Page of Swords, King of Cups. All right. And we also have uh, several cards that deal with our emotions and in particular love energy. And that's the lovers, king of cups and uh, three of cups. So I feel guys that it's very clear that the message that you are being given, the, given, the uh, energy that you need to let go of is regret or anger around love that didn't work. Um, we have here the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is um, a betrayal card. It is a closure card. It is the end of uh, usually a very hurtful cycle uh, where someone that we loved, cared deeply about, uh, trusted, looked out for, um, just did not do right by us. And sometimes it's one person, but sometimes it's a system. You know, so for some of you, I'm getting very strongly this hit that this might be about your family system. So not just that a particular person betrayed you, but you may have several members of your family who working in concert with each other, whether intentionally or not, it could just be based on how their personalities gel and the kinds of things that they organically do and say that it has resulted in a betrayal of you. And you know, it feels, I'm sure, very flippant, very easy for me to say, let go of the energy of, I'm getting very strongly the anger around this, uh, but also the regret and the sadness about this betrayal. Again, whether or not it was the betrayal of one person, possibly in a romantic situation or one friend, or it's the betrayal of a system. Again, it could be your family system. Uh, it could be a group of friends. It could be a bunch of people at your job. But somehow, some way, you feel that the devotion that you gave to a person or a situation, uh, I'm getting that it's more around people than it is a situation. You know, some of the readings that I do, we get this idea of um, it could be applicable to a circumstance or a relationship, um, an endeavor that we're trying to do or a relationship. I feel here that this is very much about relationships. It's about people. We have so many people in your in your reading here. You know, we have the lovers, we have, as, long, as well as the angel that's with them, um, though I guess technically angels aren't people. But anyway, um, Page of Swords, Hierophant, Fool, the three ladies in the, in the Three of Cups and the King of Cups. So there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of people. Oh, oh, and the one that's, and, and the one that's got their face, like every single one of your cards, every single one of your cards has, you know, is, is really highlighting a person. Um, as opposed to it just feeling about a feeling like it's about a situation. So this reading, I feel, is very much about relationships, regardless of the kind. Um, and the possible outcomes for you in letting go of this energy of anger, of regret, and fear. I'm getting fear, but not as strongly as the anger. 
Some of you, this is turned into uh, feelings of fear around letting people in again, or fear, even more so, fear of being there for others, and fear that you can't trust yourself and trust your own judgment. I'm getting that there was gaslighting that was a part of this for many of you. But while fear is a part of it, the, the primary energy that's, that's coming through that I'm feeling you're being led to let go of is the anger around this betrayal. One of the uh, possible outcomes of this for you is that you're going to see that this betrayal was ultimately for your benefit. Part of what happened here is that you are no longer in alignment with the person or persons who, who betrayed you. You're no longer in alignment with them and it's that's so vibrationally you you had to elevate beyond them you had to ascend beyond them as well they picked up on the fact that you were no longer a fit for them they could hear it in how you spoke you had a new way of speaking as evidence here in our page of swords and this is because of lessons that you had learned you may be someone who applied yourself to personal growth and what we forget to count on or realize is going to happen when we set upon trying to improve ourselves or grow is that things will be different afterwards. A lot of times there's a circumstance that we're already dealing with or a relationship that we're already in that inspires us to try to be better because we think we're the problem. We think we're the reason why something's not working. So we go to make ourselves better and we set upon a path of growth. And when we set upon this path of growth, it's with the intention that once I'm better, then this situation will be better, or then this person will treat me better. But what happens instead is that we grow beyond that person and that which attracted us to them or attracted them to us is no longer there. Lessons get learned and you have learned those lessons. This is evidenced in our Hierophant here, okay? It's also here in this hierophant is the fact that this person or situation, these people were a teacher for you, were teachers for you. You are now able to go forward with new hope if you allow yourself to take risks. You're being encouraged to not be afraid to take risks. Keep going, knowing that you're gonna to go towards that which it is you really want. You have not seen that thing yet. You don't even fully have a concept of what that, what that is or what that's going to be. You think you know because you feel that what you've had before wasn't right, but what you think you know is informed by what you have already experienced. And so it's a little bit of a skewed idea of what you want, but what is coming for you is more and better than what you could have imagined. And it is because of this growth that you have done. And with this uh, moving forward, by allowing yourself to let go of this energy of anger, see the anger, the anger is going to keep you stuck. The anger is going to make you want to keep trying to fix the situation or get an apology from someone or um, yeah, just the, trying to get something from that other person, whether it's an apology or just to have them act right, other person or persons. So the, inner, the staying in the anger keeps you connected to this thing which you are no longer aligned with and can no longer serve you. So in some way you have to find, you have to allow yourself to let go of that anger. Whether or not that means forgiveness for you is your call. You're going to decide that. But as you do that, this is going to open you up to the kind of love that you can be a part of. One, because you're worthy of it. And two, because you have done the work. You have done the work. You have learned the lessons. And you will be in better environments with, I'm going to say it, better people. Some people think it's wrong to say that, you know, some people are good and some people are not. Some people are worthy or some people are not. I don't think that. I think some people are pieces of shit and some people are great. And what's coming for you as you let yourself move forward and you let yourself begin to take a risk in relationships again. And I don't mean a risk that's going to cause you harm. I mean just allowing yourself to be there for others again and allowing yourself to accept love from others again, accept interest from others again, companionship, favors. Some of you, I'm getting that you feel like you can't accept a favor because it's just a setup. That person is setting you up to ask for something big or to do dirt to you later. You've been gaslit. I'm getting a lot of gaslighting energy here. You've been tricked. 
You are used. That is the harsh reality of it. You are used. And you're not going to get the feeling of okayness back by holding on to the anger. You will get the feeling of okayness in yourself, in your soul, in your psyche by going, that is over. They are not worth me. Worthy of me. Sorry. They are not worthy of me. I am moving on. And this is going to bring you to a new group of people. This is going to bring you to new situations. This is going to bring you to possibly creating your own family uh, in the sense of, you know, chosen family. You know, we hear people talk about chosen family. So it's like if you come from a family system that's not functional, that doesn't work for you, where you that, that might have been toxic, not just didn't work for you, but might have been toxic, hindered you, held you down. Uh, we get to choose. We didn't get to choose the family we were born into. At least I don't think so. Some people do. But we do get to choose the family that we live out our lives with here on earth. For some of you, it's going to be the actual creation of your own family with a partner and, and creating a family environment, a family system that is healthier and better than what the one you came from ever was or the one you're leaving. For some of you, this isn't about family. It is about love relationships. And what I'm getting for you with the Three of Cups card is be ready, honey. Because there are so many people that are about to want to be with you and be in your space. You are going to have so many, you're going to be surrounded by love. I'm getting, there's a lot of social events that are coming up that are, uh, they're going to uh, introduce you to some new people, particularly with summer. We're in July right now. So you're going to get that, okay? And then um, just know that, accept the invitations. Okay, yes, I got it very loudly. Accept the invitations. When you stay stuck in the anger that you need to let go of, if you stay stuck in the anger, you're not going to want to go to these social events. You need to let yourself go to these social events because it will help you move beyond the anger. It is a step, but it's a band-aid kind of step. You have to also decide to internally and psychologically let go. And now I said internally, I meant emotionally and psychologically let go of that, that anger. Uh, so lots of social opportunities for you and, and meeting of meeting people to date in these scenarios. Um, or if you're an online dater, I'm getting your inbox is going to be so like bombarded with so many people. Once you let go of this anger, it is going to free up your vibration to receive more. And then in your future with this King of Cups, you guys, we have this person or again, system, love system, whether it's friends or family, that is emotionally mature, that is emotionally evolved, that comes with the same desire for good experiences of the heart that you have. Someone who is ready for you, someone who is on your level, someone who has uh, done the work as well, had the lessons as well. So again, whether this is one person or it's a group group of people because you go to a new work environment and get better work friends or you um, join an association or join some kind of a social group or something. But either way, the fullness of love, the fullness of mature love is coming for you. So you are moving from this energy of betrayal to this energy of fulfilled love, whether it's romantic or platonic or familial. All right, let's get your cards. Let's, uh, <laughs> okay. So now I'm nervous again. <laughs> let's get your, uh, oh, let's see what goddesses are going to be. Um, geez, I'm nervous. Oh, hi, goddesses. Hi, it's Sean and the Vibers. We are here to, uh, to get some guidance. So guys, we're going to, we're going to choose from three. Okay, so let me just move these up a little bit to make more space. Make sure we can see all of that. Oh, okay, so we got our first one. Let me just, excuse me while this is, this is not going to be pretty. I'm just going to let you know right now. Okay. <laughs> all right, so this is card one. All right, so this is for group one. All right, group two. One of the things I love about this deck is it's such an easy shuffle. For, oh, because they're so smooth. This is group two. Okay. And again, we're looking for which goddess you will either inhabit the energy of or can choose to inhabit the energy of as you move forward or look to as a model for how to uh, move forward. We have, oh, 
I saw you right here. And three. Okay. So, putting my deck back. All right, so group one, your goddess is, oh, I don't know how to say her name. So we are going to learn about her together. And I don't know how to say her name, but let me show you this card because it is so beautiful. No clue. Hopefully, I don't think Ethany actually does provide us with, um, I'm pretty sure she does not provide us with um, the phonetic spellings of these goddesses. I have another deck where they do and it's so helpful um no but what she does give us in parentheses is um i guess the translation of the name so it's white buffalo calf woman i mean she's not a calf woman white buffalo calf woman okay so her keyword is ceremonies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and her symbols are uh the buffalo ceremonial pipe beads and her affirmation is i observe with reverence the world around, around me and it says here uh in the guidebook i don't know how to say her name i want to try i want to try it uh to sanwi is my guess i'm assuming the p is silent sanwi to sanwi i don't know i hope uh otherwise known as white buffalo calf woman white buffalo calf woman is the goddess who brought the sacred ceremonies to the Sioux and Lakota people of North America. Examples include sweat lodge purification, naming, vision quest, and sun dance ceremonies. She is said to be a beautiful young woman in a white buckskin holding a sacred pipe, which I don't know how to pronounce either. It sounds like, I think it's like the, no, I don't want to butcher this. Ch Chinampa? Maybe? I don't know. She gave the people many gifts, relieved them of their famine, and taught them many of civilization's arts. She is also a healer who comes to help during critical situations. So for those of you who chose uh, card one and this particular goddess, I'm getting a few things for you. The first being absolutely, definitely participation in ceremonies. Another word for ceremonies is events. Another word for events is parties, okay? So um, letting yourself be available for those when they come up. I'm also getting that for some of you, this is really about sacred ceremonies as well. So that may be about whatever your spiritual or religious practice is. If you have been staying away from those groups or those groups events because of being in the place of woundedness, you're being encouraged to get back um, involved, go back to them. Um, also this affirmation that we have, uh, that Ethany has provided us for this goddess, I observe with reverence the world around me. So I feel like that's about how, because of what you've gone through, because of the experience of betrayal that led to this anger that you've been harboring and this uh, fear of connecting with others again, it, it is coloring how you look at the world around you, not just other people and not just yourself, but your whole experience of life right now is um, full of pain. It is jaded. And in some ways, it's a little bit judgmental. It's a little bit haughty is what I'm getting because it's a defense mechanism on your part of this shouldn't have happened to me or they shouldn't have done this thing and just kind of feeling a little bit above it all. And what you're being reminded with this particular goddess, I think, is to allow yourself to be in awe of life again. Be in awe of those around you again, again, and bring respect back into the equation. It begins with respect for yourself. You have to forgive yourself and stop holding it against yourself that you went through what you've gone through with this person or these or these uh, this um, system, the situ uh, the fam like if it's family or or your um, group of friends. If it's family, know that this is a that was a hundred percent not your fault. And the only thing that you could do while you were in it was try to survive and get through it however you could. And then from there, grow beyond it and move on. And yes, that means moving past people and letting them go and saying goodbye. And that can sound hard and harsh when we're talking about family. 
But if your experience of life is being negatively uh, colored by your judgment of that situation and yourself in that situation, you have got to heal that and you've got to move forward so that you can enjoy life again and just be in awe of people, situations. When something comes up, when a new meeting happens, being able to hope again because of the ability to believe. Okay. You know, we had the fool in your in your main reading, and the fool is about childlike wonder, idealistic, you know, thinking, and so uninformed thinking at that, right? The fool has not experienced the things that cause hurt yet, and so they can believe, and you're being encouraged to get back to that place. Now, for the second set of you, we have Sedna. Sedna, I know a little bit about, but not a whole lot, so we're going to refer to the guidebook again. Um... And, you know, guys, thank you for being patient with me in this, because I really wanted to incorporate the goddesses in this reading today. And I almost didn't because of, um, again, nervousness around not knowing them very well. But I was like, but I want to learn them. And this is a great way for for us to learn them together. Um, in fact, I might turn this into like, I don't know, I might do more about this learning about the goddesses thing here on, on my on my YouTube channel. Um, we'll see. We'll see. OK, so with Sedna. Her key word is sacrifice. Oof. I just felt so much because I'm pretty sure in the Tarot of the Divine, the depiction of the Ten of Swords card is said in this story. Uh, Tarot of the Divine uses fairy tales and folklore from all over the world to illustrate each of the cards in both the Major and the Minor Arcana. And if I'm not mistaken... Sedna's story is the one that's used for the Ten of Swords. But you know what? We'll know when we read from this guidebook, if, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, so um, the key word is sacrifice. And her symbols are seal, braids, and orca. And I'm pretty sure orcas are, yes, they're whales. They're whales. Okay. So it says, Sedna is the Inuit goddess of the sea. She has dominion over the Arctic Sea and all sea creatures that live there. There are many versions of Sedna's story. Most have a common theme. Yep, this is it. Yep, this is it. Um, her father takes her to the sea in a kayak and chops off her fingers. Her fucking father did that. And I know some of y'all can relate to that. Your fathers didn't probably literally cut off your fingers, but... They may have hindered you in ways that felt like, you know, you were cut down or just said horrible things to you. And it didn't have to be a father. It could be the other parent that we never talk bad about the mother, you know. But anyway, or someone who is a father figure or father like. So her father takes her to the sea in a kayak and chops off her fingers. These fall into the water and become fish, seals, walrus, whales and other sea creatures. The Inuit. The Inuit relied on her animals for survival. And shamans would travel to the depths of the ocean to comb triangles, oh sorry, to comb tangles out of her hair and braid it to appease her. She is a wild and beautiful goddess, just like the ocean she represents. I skipped something and I didn't do it on purpose, but her affirmation, Sedna's affirmation is, I release what no longer serves. This is 100% a big old part of what we had here in the reading, right? So it's like, the, it's actually, no, that is the reading. That's the point, right? We're letting go of energy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so the affirmation is, I release what no longer serves. In this case, for those of you who chose this goddess to inhabit, you are being, uh, or, or to learn from, you are being guided. You're not done with the healing. You're not done with the pain of it. You have crying to do. One of the reasons why you're not done with it is because you may be someone whose tendency is fight over flight or freeze or fawn. Uh, your tendency may be to buck up and be little miss or Mr. Badass when a difficult situation comes up. Or you might be someone who's super analytical when a difficult situation comes up and doesn't fully let yourself process the emotions that go along with it. 
Your guidance here is you have got to get down in those emotions so that you can release them. You've got to process this. Uh, let go of what no longer serves. This is also important for those of you who found this reading today. And for you, it's about a family system. If you have come from a family system where you were held down, where you were talked bad about within your family by other members of your family, where you were outright neglected or abandoned, uh, verbally abused, physically abused, uh, psychologically abused. We talked about it earlier. It's come up a lot in this reading, Gaslit. If that is your reality, if your family doesn't act like a family is supposed to be, you have to let go of them even though you're, they're your family because they're not being family to you. You were born into that group of people and that's where it stopped. They have broken the familial contract. You owe them nothing. You owe them nothing. I want to say it again. You owe them nothing. Because I know some people will feel like, well, you know, it's my mother and she brought me in the world. Did you ask her to? She did that. And if she was a good mother, great. Stay in contact with her. If she was not a good mother, and I, by good, I mean good enough. I don't mean that she has to be perfect. But if she was a bad mother, if you can say she was a bad mother, you don't owe her the fact that she brought you into the world. Same for your father or your siblings. It could even be your twin, you know? So know that it is okay to let go of these people that by birth we feel that we, we may feel like we have to stay connected to. And then if it is um, friend groups, you may be from a small town or you may even be from a larger town and you feel like your social interactions are limited, your social, social, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not interactions, but your options, social options are limited. But let's go back to the first. You might be from a small town where like everybody knows everybody else and it's, it's, you know, and you've known them all your life. And these are the only people that you know to socialize with. And so you feel like you have to stay connected to them, but you are growing beyond them. You are growing beyond that. And you are being encouraged by Sedna to go ahead and let yourself move on. This is also the case if you happen to be in a bigger environment. But again, it could be because of the kind of work you do. And maybe in your work, you guys all socialize together. So you feel like you have to be there for those things. You know, you can start like showing up for a drink and then leaving. You don't have to stay the whole time. Uh, and then go and hang out with people who you enjoy their company and they enjoy yours and they treat you well. So you can let go of what no longer serves you. In some cases, this is around a job maybe and the environment at your job and feeling betrayed there. Maybe you've worked your ass off for year after year after year after year, but you never get promoted. Let go of the anger of that after you've processed the anger of that and let yourself move forward. I do feel that for the majority of you who got this reading today, because we had so much cups energy or so much love energy between the two cups and the lover's card, I do feel like for the majority of you, this is about personal relationships, interpersonal relationships. But for some of you, it might be about your work as well. Particularly if you're somebody who loves your work. Like me, I love my work. So whenever things don't go right with it, it, it hurts me deeply in my heart space. I've... Uh, I've rarely looked at my work as just a means for money. Those jobs that I've had that are just a means for money, eh, I don't care about them, <laughs> you know? And so they're not going to inspire feelings of hurt or betrayal in me. The way if something, certain kinds of things happen within, you know, my art, that's, that's hard. Even just thinking about it now, it's just making me like, kind of like, you know? So anyway, so that's you, group two. For group three, you got, oh, interesting. So one thing that I forgot to mention about this uh, deck is... Uh, with the modern modern goddess oracle by Ethany, um, she, in addition to having several goddesses in the deck, I think it's like forty four or something like that. Goddesses, it's not written on this book. Um, there are also sixteen, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, archetype cards, female archetype cards, and the one that you guys got is badass. All right, you guys got badass. And every time I see this card, it reminds me of Sophia from the Golden Girl, Sophia Petrillo. So with, you know, I am familiar with this card. And I'm also very familiar with this energy. So I can intuitively, intuitively, sorry, say to you that your guidance is to not forget your damn worth. And to know that other people don't define your worth, whether they treat you well or whether they treat you poorly. 
Your worth is inherent to you. And those values that you hold that determine for you what your worth is, you have the right to change those at any time. You're not stuck in any way of looking at or thinking about yourself. And because of that, you are not required to stay stuck in anybody else's image of you either. The ultimate uh, way to be a badass is to be present and authentic for yourself in your life at every moment at all times. And it is easier for me to say that than it is for people to do it, particularly if you're connected to, say, a husband or a partner or wife. If it's not a husband, I forget that men can watch these things too. Sorry, guys. Um, It's primarily women that watch these on social media. But whatever it is, whoever it is you are with, you might be tied to someone and you might have children together. And so it's very much in your face how they see you or what they expect of you. But guess what? So, (laughs) so you can change it anyway. And if they love you enough, which they probably do, they will adjust to the new sides of yourself that you're bringing out. And if they don't love you enough to roll with those punches, peace out. And again, that's easy for me to say. I'm not living your life, but that's what I would do. So because I did read from the book for these other two, I feel like I'm kind of shortchanging group three if I don't read from the book for that for yours as well. Though, again, I'm pretty sure I got that spot on Um, (laughs) if I do say so myself. But I am going to. Where are you? Here she is. Okay, I'm going to read from uh, Ethany's guidebook. excuse me guys, about the badass for you as well, in case you feel like you need it. So the badass, it says her keyword is authority. Authority. You are the decision maker. Like I said, you get to decide. You get to decide it all. You get to decide it all, particularly when it comes to you and your life. Her symbols are sunflowers, roses, and a thorn. I want to remind you of the queen of wands in the tarot deck. She is a master manifester. She creates her life the way she wants it. And she has a sunflower in that card and she is sitting on a throne. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a a, right, a white rose in there as well on that card as well. I am talking specifically about the Rider Waite Smith or in this case, the... Um, wiser tarot uh in that version of the queen of cups i'm pretty sure there is a white rose and there's definitely those other two uh symbols that i mentioned that are also the badasses symbols the sunflowers and the throne okay uh so you have queen of wands energy and if you are not familiar with it google it Google it. But again it's this badass it is you being in control of your life you getting to decide Ooh, yes, her affirmation is my body, my time, my choice. So for you guys, your message is again so, so, so clear about you allowing yourself to have power. When we get stuck in the feeling of anger that comes from betrayal, we are making ourselves small. We are giving the other person or persons or the system that made us feel bad all of the power. But one of the ways that you can begin to reclaim your personal power is by taking ownership of the part you played in it, whether it's choosing the person or choosing to stay in the situation too long. Um, Again, whether it's romantic or it's, you know, friend group. And this is not to say you should beat yourself up over that because we've already talked about the need for forgiveness, but allow yourself to own that you did play a part in it so that you don't feel like a victim of life. And that you can know and remember that you are creating your life. And that's what this badass card is reminding you. You get to create your life. And then it says, uh, and meet the archetype, Ethan, he says, maybe this badass was not what you thought a badass would be, but that is where her divine feminine archetype shines. While authority can mean many things, our badass is an authority in how the how she chooses to live her life. This is important. Choice is very important for you, group three. You may be people who have historically had a hard time making decisions for yourself, let alone for others, and you are being encouraged to allow yourself to make choices, even if the choices end up being wrong, because you can then make new choices. And the more you practice making choices, the better you'll become at it, particularly making choices for yourself. 
Shoot, you chose this card and you chose it by intuition, right? Um, yeah, so how she chooses to live her life. And then it says, she has worked hard to feel comfortable in her skin, how she expresses herself and is grounded from her own wise experience. This allows her to live loud and proud, set her own standards without worrying about what others think and look within when making decisions. So the biggest message for you, group three, when it comes to this archetype showing up for you today is know this, what you are now uh, letting, needing to let go of this energy you're needing to let go of because of this this hurt from the past it could be the recent past and I should have said this earlier it could be the recent past but it might be a very very old betrayal a very very old hurt for some of you dating all the way back to your childhood okay um, but let all of this inform you and let all of it make you know more about yourself because of what it felt like for you to be in it and what you now know you want for yourself, that is not what this experience has been. And begin to create this new thing for you. That is what I have for you today. Ah, ah I didn't say it right. Let me do it again. <laughs> that is what I have for you today, you guys. I, I like how this reading went. It was very organic. It's almost like you guys were right here with me and it was very real. Because, you know, when I'm, you know, doing personal readings for people, which I offer on Etsy if you need one, um we're just in the moment and it's not you know oh it's me with a camera and everything's going to be perfect and I feel like that's what this reading here was today for you and I hope you have found value in it I hope you enjoy it if you have found value in it please uh, give it a love or a like depending on which platform you are on also tell me in the comments you know which archetype you chose which of these three cards did you choose and how you already see yourself as beginning to inhabit those qualities or how you're looking forward to starting to let more of the energy of those qualities into your life. Uh, I want to remind you that this is a collaboration with Ignited Intuition and my awesome, awesome sister from another mister, Inesha. She is going to be reading for you today about what energies you need to let into your life and the possible outcomes of that. So when you go there and uh, get her reading, tell her I said, hey, write it in her comments. That'll help bump her you know, up in the, in the YouTube algorithm. And we want to help our friends, don't we? I don't know if you guys know that, but when you leave comments, it totally helps. It doesn't just help the video, but it helps the channel. So if you're someone who's already been doing that historically, thank you. If you have not now, uh, this is your invitation. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And then the last thing that I want to say, you guys, is I'm going to start um, in the, the very near future, I'm going to start answering one of your questions at the end of every reading. So if you have a question that you would like me to answer using the tarot, please be sure to fill out the, <laughs> there's a link in the description box uh, that'll take you to a Google form. Go ahead and click on that, write in your question. And what you need to know is that I will be uh, anonymizing you. Let me say that better. I'm going to keep your name private. I will be changing your names in order to keep your privacy intact. And then finally, the last thing that I want to say to you, which I can't believe I almost forgot to mention, is I have a wonderful series of interviews that are going to be um, highlighted on this channel over the next three weeks starting tomorrow. So when I say on this channel, that's for those of you who are watching this on YouTube. If you're on one of the other platforms, you are going to have to go to YouTube to um, enjoy this. But um, on July 13th, Jenny Florence of Moon Magic Tarot is coming to visit my podcast, Not So Average with Sean Wilson. We are talking about life path and destiny. On July 20th, we are going to be talking with Alyssa LaRose of Celtic Fairy Tarot. And then on July uh, 27th, I lost my place for a second. On July 27th, Odessa Mall, Mystic Intuitive Healer, is going to be coming to share her thoughts and feelings around the same topic. All three of those interviews will be hosted on my Sean Vibes YouTube channel. Uh, they will go live on their respective Thursdays at 11, 11 a.m. Pacific time because I'm in L.A. So you don't want to miss it. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe now so you'll get a notification when the video is up and ready for you to see. But in the meantime, thank you so much for being here and I will see you in my next one.